Okay, this is going to be an introduction to weight maps, and um, weight maps are extremely useful in LightWave, and they can be used for so many things that this 10 minute tutorial will not even scratch the surface. So I am going to show you just one or two instances of how to use a weight map, how to create one, how to set one up, how to use it in a couple different circumstances. Well, here's um, a little land plane I have, a little subdivided uh, plane here I'm going to use for a, a terrain. And uh, let's go to weight shaded mode. And as you can see here with the W selected, W for weight, we're set to no weight map right now. And um, <clears throat> if I want to set up a weight map, I could simply, uh, easy way is just select a bunch of, of points, select some points down here, and go to new weight map and save it as uh, bottom, I guess. Wait, hold on. Um, we'll call that valley. All right. As you can see, I already have one here that I created earlier called Mountain. Um, I'll show you how to edit these weight maps here as well. So once you, all you do, do again is click on the W, select a bunch of points or polygons or whatever, and select New and give it a name. And once you've selected it, uh, if you want to edit it, select it in the drop-down list. Um, let's grab these points here, and let's <clears throat> these points here. Everything is orange, deep orange is 100% affected and then you'll see it fall off to gray which is not affected at all by the weight map. So I'm going to select these points over here I'm going to set map value. I'm going to make it so that these points are affected a little bit. So I'm going to call these um, and give these value 40 percent. So as you'll see here now these are sort of like a little bit pinkish and that means they're being affected a little bit um, influenced a little bit by the weight map. Okay now um, I have already sent this to layout so here's my land object in layout and what I want to do in layout is I want to go ahead and use an image to um, make this look like mountains. I'm going to displace this this very simple object to make it look much more complex. So I'll hit P, bring up the properties <clears throat> and as you can see I've set my display sub patch level it's normally 3 but I'm going to set it to 10 so that we can see what's going on and we want to render we're going to set it even higher to like 20 <clears throat> this is so that we'll be able to see the deformations taking place. We'll go to deform and uh, we'll select uh, textured displacement. This means you can use um, Lightwave's uh, texture editor to displace the object. So let's see here. Let's load in the marble that comes with the image map that's mapped on there already. And as you can see, it doesn't look like it's doing too much. And uh, it's because the temperature amplitude has to be cranked up. Let's put it to 20. <clears throat> now it's uh, on the wrong axis, so I'll select Y, and as you can see, it's it's really freaking out. It looks like a bunch of pine cones here. I'll size it up, and now, yeah, as you can see, we've very quickly gotten um, a bunch of uh, mountain ranges out of this thing. It looks like a, a mountain range. But uh, let's say we just wanted that area called mountain to be affected by this. We don't want the entire thing. We want everything else to be smooth. Um, let's add a gradient. Instead of using previous layer, let's use the weight map, and let's use the mountain weight map. And we'll have to create a key here. Set the value to zero. And then what you have to do here, as you can see, is you have to create some keys. And what you, oh, what you have to do is you have to start messing with this to the point where you get it to fall off the way you want it to. So as you can see here, it's very clearly falling off. If you can see it, there's a lot of panels and stuff in the way. But as we move this up and down, we're using the weight map to get more and more of an inf more or less of an influence, depending on how we move this around. So as you can see, using this gradient, we can go ahead and limit the area that the displacement uh, is taking place. So if we do it like this, where we we make the the gradient very close together it's a very sharp fall off and if we were to move it we and we could animate uh, these things later on if we wanted to I, I guess there's certain ways to do things where we could animate them but as you can see the weight map ends right there and um, this is a very very sharp fall off now you probably don't want that that looks kind of unnatural let's go here and make it more pronounced all right now we can see exactly what's going on and we have just this part in the middle that's being deformed but this part here is very sharp sharply falling off so let's go ahead and select these set map value to 
20 or say 30. Yeah, I'm gonna select some points around the edges here just so we can get a better fall off. I think it's on that side there. Let's see here. We should be getting a better fall off by now. Now we can kind of drape this out a bit more and it, as you can see there, it's blending. On this side it's blending quite nicely. This is the area we were working on, the weight map. So as you can see it goes from very sharp to less well defined and it kind of peters out and as you can see this this part here looks pretty natural that's the part we were working on where we set it to about twenty percent so that's a very good way of using weight map to limit and to inf and to uh, create the fall off on uh, what we want so for example we want to add some more points over the corner here we could set this fall off to one hundred now we got another little mountain peak over in the corner now as you can see that's all it took to do that. We didn't have to model anything extra. We just uh, selected some points and uh, let's go ahead and select these points here and set those to 20 percent so we get more of a fall off here. And as you can see it looks <clears throat> a bit more realistic. Alright so that's one thing uh, using the uh, weight maps to uh, using the weight maps to go ahead and limit a deformation Let's go ahead and load up General Grievous here. Okay, so here's General Grievous. He's um, going to be in a Star Wars fan film I'm working on right now. And as you can see, he's a robot, and he has to his arms. When he moves his arms, they need to be controlled by these bones. But normally, the bones will go ahead and normally the bones will go ahead and uh, make a smooth deformation. So if you bring up the property for these bones, you'll see that I have a weight map selected. Let's go ahead and send General Grievous to the modeler. Did he go to the modeler? There he is. Alright, so he's in weight shaded mode. So if we were to look at the weight maps, I have you can't see them, they're falling off the side here. But here's, here's the uh, weight map that I have associated with that. So as you can see, everything that's, that's orange is going to be affected by that, that bone, and the stuff that's outside that weight map will not be affected at all. So that when we move this bone, his arm moves in a stiff fashion. Now if we were to turn that off, if we were to select no weight map, and now when we move the arm, as you can see, the bone is squishing his uh, torso around. Now you could add bones to his torso to limit the influence, but it will still give you kind of like a smooth, kind of squishy deformation. And in this case, we want more of a robotic feel. I'm going to select the bicep again, and now as you can see, it's everything is snapped back into place. Same thing with the head. I limited the uh, head so that... Let's go in here and we'll take a look at the head. And as you can see, that's the only thing that's, that's being uh, used by this weight map. Uh, but the only the bones are, are being affected and you can see here um, and the entire head is orange that's being 100% affected and then the neck here there's just a little bit of influence so that when he moves his head let's move it around here so when he does move his head the uh, the neck gets affected just a little bit. In fact, that def deformation doesn't look too good. So what I could do is I could go in here later on. I could go ahead and, and select some points here and give it a little bit of a uh, of a value there, so that these points are in fact being influenced by the head when the head rotates. And uh, that would give it the uh, the head would be rigid, and these things would it's it's a way to to limit the or to tell the bones exactly what you want them to do instead of the bones just going by their default, which sometimes doesn't work. So as you can see, is the neck tubes here because they're supposed to be flexible, are kind of stretching a bit. So it's a way to to maintain attain certain certain.